My name is Fredrik Nilsson, and I'm the Chief Financial Officer. In this presentation, you will get an update about AK's financial performance. AK's strong focus on customer code development and successful integration of acquisitions have driven profit growth for many years. We have seen a CAGR in operating profit over the last 10 years that have exceeded 10%. There's also been a good growth in operating profit per kilo, which we have been able to grow 6% annually. AK's efforts and investments to drive speciality and customer unique solutions have really paid off. Zooming in on 2020, it has been a year impacted by COVID-19. We started the year really good with a strong first quarter. Q2 was then heavily impacted by COVID, particularly our food service, but also bakery and chocolate and confectionery was impacted. Q3 was more a mixed bag. We saw a strong momentum in our specialty solutions, particular for special nutrition, plant-based food, but also for chocolate and confectionery and fats. Food service and dairy were still under pressure. Zooming in on the operating profit this year, we have seen declining volumes of 5%, which has negatively impacted operating profit by 185 million. The volume drop we have seen this year has been mainly during the second quarter. We have at the same time also been able to execute on our strategy to do more Q development solution. That has given us 100 million in EBIT. We have also taken measures to adapt to the new situation and tight cost management initiated in the second quarter has also had a strong impact on our operating profit and has had contributed with 115 million in operating profit. Then we have also seen a negative FX year to date, and that has been mainly during the third quarter where we have seen a stronger Swedish Krona. The execution of our optimization program announced in the second quarter is progressing according to plan. That should generate annual savings of about 150 million, reaching full run rate by the second half of 2021. To give some more colors on our cost management and our optimization program, that has generated 150 million in savings so far in 2020. On the short term, we have traveled less, we have not participated in trade shows. So you can say partly you get that for free into your PL, but that's also matter when you're looking at your bottom line. We have reduced temporary staff. Some people in the group have been on furloughing. And we have also saying farewell to some colleagues during the Q2 and Q3. Long term, we will focus on utilizing AK size as a truly global company to improve and make more efficient purchases. Part of the revised strategy that we presented last year was about optimizing some of our segments. And we are now running full speed ahead to execute on that strategy. Our ambition remains the same, to grow operating profit in average by 10% year on year, with a good growth in earnings per share. The growth will come from four pillars. Volumes, we have the ambition to grow at least in line with the market, but clearly we would like to gain market share and grow a little bit faster than the market. Mix, continue to invest in our capabilities and drive Q development solution together with our customers. Productivity, as always, when you have manufacturing, you need to drive productivity, but you also need to drive efficiency in your administrative functions. On top, we will continue to make selective acquisitions. This together will continue the journey of good and solid profit growth in line with our ambition. Despite the challenges in the world with COVID, we have been able to deliver a positive free cash flow despite we have seen higher raw material prices that occurred in the beginning of the year. CapEx level have been lower than planned this year as we have been holding back 
some of the investments planned due to the uncertainty in the world. Slightly more than 50 million has been spent for acquisitions in 2020. There will be more to come during the fourth quarter as we have paid for the minority shares in India during the fourth quarter. All in all, we have been able to reduce the net debt by around 140 million in 2020. AAK has a strong balance sheet. Our net debt divided by the EBITDA is 1.04, end of September. The, our target is to be below three. We have no problem to go closer to three if we find the right M&A opportunity. Having said that, we will also like to have enough headroom to absorb the swings in raw material prices, which impact our cash flow, but also to have some dry ammunition to make selective acquisitions. The trend looks really good, and the low net debt of EBITDA is also helping us to not pay too much of margins to our banks on our loans. We have a very solid debt portfolio. Almost 70% of our credit facilities have a duration of more than one year. We have total credit facilities of 8.2 billion, whereof 6.9 billion is committed facilities. Looking at our unused committed credit facilities by end of September, they amount to 5.6 billion. So a very, very solid debt portfolio. Over the last 10 years, we have been able to deliver double digit growth in both earnings per share and dividend per share. Our dividend policy is to pay out 30 to 50% of net profit. The ratio has been 30 to 35% and closer to 35% over the last years. I will also like to highlight that there will be an extra general meeting late November to decide about the dividend linked to the 2019 result. Over the last five years, AK has spent more than four billion in investments. This is excluding acquisitions. What have we done? We have added capacity to AAK Kaman in India. We have added capacity in Denmark or Western Africa to secure we have enough supply to our high-end chocolate solutions. Last year, we announced capacity expansion in China for special nutrition or our high-end bakery solution. That is 300 million in total that we will invest in 2019, 20, and a little bit going into 2021 as well. As I said earlier, CapEx spent in 2020 is slightly lower than planned as we have pushed some of the investments forward due to the COVID situation. That also partly explains why we expect to see a little bit of a higher level in 2021 versus this year. Our efforts to work with the capital structure in the group are yielding really good results. This is key as we're operating in some high tax rate countries. Over the last three and a half years, we have been able to reduce the tax rates from 28 to 24 percent. This implies an annual cost savings of more than 75 million SEC. Our team in Europe, and particularly our local team in UK, have worked really hard to secure that we as a company are as ready as possible for Brexit. AK has a limited export out of UK. Approximately 85 to 90 percent of what we produce in the UK is also consumed in UK. We have, however, taken some actions because we expect to see some tariffs on some imported raw materials and utilities that we will try to push to our customers. We have built up some additional inventory to secure supply to our customers. We have also added some resources to be able to take care of the expected increased administrative burden. All in all, we don't expect to get a material long-term impact from Brexit. However, short-term, there can be some bumps on the road. Despite the COVID situation in the world, mergers and acquisitions are high on AK's agenda. We have continued to work really hard with our pipeline, despite the different travel restrictions in the world, and have found new digital ways to interact with potential sellers. 
I will talk a little bit more about our four pillars in our M&A strategy. The geographical expansion, there is definitely still white spots on the map. Looking in Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, Middle East, but definitely also out in Asia, where we have a relative limited presence so far. The other thing is where we're looking in for M&A opportunities to add in capacity. When an AK site is running full, you have the option to either invest in an existing site or to explore if you can buy capacity. The third pillar is technology. First of all, oils and fats remain our core. But if we can find an ingredient that we can blend in in our, one of our fat solutions that gives more customer value or decomplex for the customer, it's definitely of interest for AK. The fourth pillar in our M&A strategy is about adjacent product portfolio. We took one step into adjacencies last year where we entered into the lecithin market. Here, we clearly have an ambition to be a more substantial player going forward. Based on our strong track record of delivering growth in earnings per share and dividend paid, combined with our solid balance sheet, our ambition remains the same, and we continue to remain prudently optimistic about the future. Thank you.